Nowadays, we don't really need a large PC in the office, being all noisy like, when we have something like this. This is a Zima Board 832 mini PC, and it's made primarily to be used as a server. It's light, small, and it's completely silent. Is it any good? Let's find out. Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribble. So this is the package that arrived. It came directly from Zima Board, no cash has been exchanged, and all thoughts are our own. The packaging is fairly no frills, which is absolutely no problem, as this product is marketed to the non-gaming enthusiast who requires a home server. The version that arrived is the Zima Board 832, which is their flagship model, with more memory and slightly higher specs. Ooh. So this box came with a love letter. Actress Momoka Nishin. Nice from Lauren, sorry bud. We do get some nice stickers. I could play with those all night. So this kit comes with a main mini PC and adapter. Let's open them up. So what we have here is something you see on a shop shelf. Displaying the specs and what to expect. Two SATA connectors, two ports for Giganet Ethernet LAN, and 4K display output. It also mentions we've got a quad-core Intel CPU and a PCI Express slot on the side. We're not too sure of what origami or ninjutsu they used, but unboxing the Zima board is a delight. So here's the manual. Not much to it. The mini PC, and it's in there fairly tight. And at the bottom, a SATA connector. In the other box, we have a power adapter, and this one includes separate adapters for different countries, such as um, uh, Europe, America and Japan, and the UK. As we're in Japan, we'll use this one. And the adapter itself outputs at 12 volts, 3 amps, and a maximum of 36 watts. Oh, and it uses a power jack. You may have noticed that the specs aren't exactly amazing. I mean, it'd be mini PC territory maybe three or four years ago, but as its use case is a server and not for gaming, it should be ample power. A pet peeve of mine is the mini display port required for the video, and I'm not exactly a fan of running eMMC storage in 2024. So here's the mini PC. Let's take a closer look. And wow, this is beautiful. Its large heatsink and choice of colors really give the Zima board its own unique personality. And as the case is essentially a large heatsink on a low power CPU, we don't necessarily need a fan to cool it down. On the end, we have two SATA ports, and in the center, it provides power for the drives. On the side, we have a slot for a PCI Express 2 before, and with this, we'll be able to expand this mini PC with an NVMe card, or even something like a low power GPU if you can find one that fits. And let's move around to the front here. We have a mini display port, and you can get cables that run out to HDMI. There's two ports for one gigabit Ethernet LAN and two USB 3s. And then in the corner, DC input for power. And while there is no lock, it is built to a high standard. Saying that, we'd like to see an easy way to mount it to the wall or something. So let's give it a try. We first connected the Zima board to our network using Ethernet LAN cable. And as there is no on and off switch, as soon as you plug it up, it's on. We'll give it 30 seconds to boot up and connect to our network, and using another computer that's on the network, we can log in using an internet browser. In here we can create an account, then we have full access to the server, allowing us to see diagnostics, use a file browser, update the system, and basically manage all of the software that the server is running. The operating system, Casa OS, is a Linux distro, but we can see many similarities taken from smartphones, giving us a powerful tool in a very easy to use package. For example, this syncing tool here has a nice description, and it gives us easy to understand instructions on how to install it and get it working making Casa OS ideal for someone who's brand new to running their own network server. And before you say that Linux is difficult, installing new tools from the App Store just couldn't be simpler. And look at all this. You got Home Assistant, uh, Jellyfin, and there are countless other tools such as firewalls, BitTorrent clients, and ad blockers. So let's install Jellyfin. This is a similar service to Plex, which allows us to share and stream video files to anyone on a network. So first we install the tool, and then Jellyfin gives us our own quick start tutorial guide. It's very simple, we just need to create an account and show it where our videos are. As the server has limited space, we decided to use an old 3.5 inch mechanical drive, and as it's formatted to XFAT, Linux can easily view the files, and our Jellyfin server is online. 
and I love how Jellyfin can scrape the information of each of our shows, making it a very pleasant viewing experience. And we can even stream our music. We even tried Crafty Controller. With this we can make our own Minecraft server that runs constantly online without the need to pay Microsoft any server fees. And while it was fairly easy to get running, to allow the Switch version to connect, you need to use the Giza Spygot version of Minecraft. Then we can connect with the PlayStation 4, Switch and PC. And we can also type in some commands. Even though there's no real need to use the video out, this is what appears if you plug the Zima board to a monitor. Linux. We can use it to browse internet and things like that, and it also comes with a range of applications. I guess if you can't find software on the CAS OS tool via the network, you can always install something with a more hands-on approach here. And we could even play with some quack. Or chess. As this is a mini PC, we can of course get into the BIOS. English is the only language to choose from, and there are many options including those that make absolutely no sense, such as fan control on a computer with no fan. There are options for secure boot, but as the chipset is a few generations old, we really wouldn't advise this if you intend on installing something like Windows 11 to it. But if you want something like Batacera Linux, it works fine. We tested the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi again, but as the hardware simply isn't on board, it won't work out of the box. But if you intend on using a USB dongle for this, you'll be right as rain. So let's see what it can emulate. First up is Megapong on the C64, running at full speed. Atari ST. Amiga. And while Sensible World of Soccer runs at full speed, Jim Power falls short, making this comparable to the performance of Raspberry Pi 4. Here's some Dreamcast. PlayStation Portable. And everyone's favourite benchmark, God of War Chains of Olympus. At three times resolution, there's significant slowdown, but lowering it to two times gives us performance slightly better than a Pi 4. Now we know of its capabilities, the question would be, does it keep cool? I'm well, glad to report that the heatsink does a very good job, and it rarely goes over 50 in regular use. At idle, it pulls around 4 watts from the wall, and while it's running a Minecraft server, Around 8. It's about time for the pros and the cons. The Zeman Board 832 is a high quality mini PC that allows the humble beginner to set up a server in no time whatsoever. It fits into a niche that is often overlooked and this silent solution is welcomed. Unfortunately, not including Wi-Fi is a bit unusual, especially as this is their flagship model, and much of the hardware, such as the EMMC storage and chipset itself, are not current gen. As a first server, this is a great piece of kit. It fits in your pocket and you're up and running in no time. But if you want something a bit faster and don't mind setting all the software up, you could try something like the B-Link EQ13 or even the smaller, albeit much louder, GMK Tech G5. Zima board, nice. Summary. i
Password, what the boss?